Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, February 11th, 2024. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, it's the Wombat. Oh my goodness. <laughs> DJ Wombat. And Dread Pirate Higgs is with us all the way from Western Canada. Welcome. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faith, Pastafarianism, God's holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, I guarantee you, you're not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over 1,100 of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? Did you hear about the inconvenient news? You might have heard of the good news, but have you heard about the inconvenient news? That's... That's what I want to oh, talk about. Oh, there's good news, bad news. I haven't heard about the inconvenient news. Oh, it's it's going to be something we'll get into the whole show. We'll dedicate a whole show to it. But before we get into it, that's our main course. We'll have an appetizer or noodles led by our own Dread Pirate Higgs. Arr, our newly lord, who art in a colander, al Dante be thy meat. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we forgive those who cuss against us. Mm. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs, and the noodles, and the grog, whenever and ever. Amen. Amen. (laughs) I've been doing a weird thing for the last couple of weeks where I wake up in the morning and I track a mood. One out of ten is what I'd give myself. Ten if I'm at the highest zero if I feel just in the complete dumps. And I since I started that board, I've realized something about myself in that I tend to be <laughs> monopolar because I've been at a 10 out of 10 for like the last three weeks oh, in a row. Oh and I realized like every single time I feel like, well, maybe I'm at a 9.5. No, I'm, I'm kicking butt. This is awesome. Like life is awesome. <laughs> like I have, I have a lot of friends. You're in a panic I'm, phase. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not in pain. My family's healthy. I got a good job. My cat loves me. Like, I'm mm. like, this is, things are awesome. I'm just going to put another 10 here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even when nice. problems come, even when problems come, I have fun fixing them. And so that's why I wanted to talk a little bit about problems and how they show up. And it's fun fixing things, particularly in an engineering environment, because I get to mm-hmm. use science to fix stuff. I can't just pray yeah. problems away. I have to understand how the problem Yeah, works. you get that feeling of accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that got me thinking this week. I was thinking to myself, you know, sometimes when things break in our laboratory or in our building, we have people, we put in a work order, but oftentimes the people at our site are good enough engineers that they can fix the problem themselves. What happens if something breaks in hell? Like who's the, who's, you You can't imagine everything works in hell, right? Like the whole point about hell is being like troublesome, inconvenient, terrible, eternal punishment. But like, what if things go dull? What if heaters break down? What if the electricity cords break down? What if the Netflix subscription goes out of phase? You know, like we need to have ways to fix it or not. Would it Mm -hmm. not actually be better if certain things stay broken in hell for the benefit of everybody? Like is when things break, is that a feature? And so I know this particularly the heater. (laughs) Right, right, right. So I came about to like the inconvenient news. This is what I mean by the inconvenient news. We all know about the good news, which is like Jesus Christ was rise and we're all saved through the blood of God and all that stuff. What if we got an extra page in the Bible? Like that's just magically appeared in every Bible to the point where we're like, oh man, every Bible has this extra page now. It's like, yes, it's directly missive. It's a missive from God. It's just a uh, inconvenient news page that says, we're sorry the heaters in hell have broken down indefinitely. We apologize for the inconvenience. And now I'm thinking to myself, Wait, so the hell's not hot anymore? <laughs> <laughs> like, you remember all that stuff we said about burning fires? Yeah, the heaters are, we can't seem to figure out a way to coordinate to fix it. So no, no. Yeah, more I hate that for them. <laughs> yeah, 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 we start, we apologize for the convenience. <laughs> so uh, it brings So me, what would that look like? Yeah, so what would that look like? Dread, you, while you are not a uh, Christian, what do you think a hell where 
the heaters are broken would look like? What kind of would that be better in a paradise? What do you think? Compare and contrast with volcanoes that yeah, shoot up it, here. It would, it would, you know, it'd be a change, mm -hmm. and you know, people like change. So I imagine just by virtue of the fact that it's different than what they've been used to, uh, I'd, I'd be, I'd be all right. Okay, okay I mean, uh, you know, saying, uh, in you know, even Pastafarian heaven, like yeah. uh, you know, it's the beer volcano. Well, it'd be nice if it was ale. And then you know, oh, change to okay. you know maybe mead or or, <clears throat> or some kind of heavy beer. You know, just just to switch it up a bit. Yeah. So wouldn't be yeah. so darn monopolous or monotonous Sh as it were. Champagne, if you will, like yeah, a nice little bubbly be. spray. So like you could be in hell and be like, ah, oh, it's hot. Oh, it's so hot to like, oh, it's not that bad. What is this? Like 70 <laughs> degrees? This, it's only balmy. <laughs> this is pretty good. I, I was like, it's, is it broken? Is the heater broken? Yeah, the heater's broken. Can we keep it broken? It's like, I don't think anyone in heaven knows how to fix this because there's only Christian engineers. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. There's only Christian yeah. scientists yeah. in heaven. Well, if, like, if there were you know, engineers in hell, it, they would have added air conditioning by now. I'm sorry. What did you just say, Larry? If there were engineers in hell, they would have had it air conditioned by now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe the small, yeah, they would have to be clever and be willing to break the rules, but I'm sure they would figure something else like that. It's like, uh, you don't have to stay outside. We figured this out like day 14,000. We, we got this working. But uh, the idea is for a lot of Christian science, a lot of problems could be prayed away or you can use God as an interventionist means to like affect real world change. Whereas with secular minded, like forms of science where you have to just understand the model and recognize when you don't know something, if something's broken, you can fix it by understanding the problem, not necessarily praying. So if you have hell and something breaks in hell, you can't pray to God to fix it. So Christian science no longer can be helpful, even though God made hell, like hell is all about being away from God. And so now you have like this realm where like if the heater breaks down or if, if something starts electrical breaking down or like something wears out or uh, a pitchfork gets dull. Now you have a system where it's like, uh, well, the only people who can fix it are the people who are already in hell. And why would they fix it? Cause it's not in their benefit to do so. In fact, if anything, there's no more unruly group of people and pirates. <laughs> forgive me. Forgive yeah. me. Then well, people the are like, we're not going to turn the heater back on. Are you kidding me? It's just the inconvenient news. And so what I have is a list of things that have broken down in hell. And I want to go through that list and see, let's see, I want us to like explore user minds and have some, some uh, freedom of creativity to explore the nature of this inconvenient news and the, and the list of things that are broken on this magical page that showed up in our Bible. So we have pitchfork polishing stations. The pitchfork polishing station is no longer in service. The missive is, sorry, Satan's polisher is on strike. Embrace the rustic charms of slightly tarnished pitchforks instead. And I and say- And rusty. And rusty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. It's true. So, you know what? I don't you have to get a, a, a tetanus shot in hell or- <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying there's, Medica there's Medicare in hell now? <laughs> well, it gets me is, I mean, we don't have a body in hell. It's just our souls, theoretically. And it's very true. Souls Souls don't interact with them, uh, theoretically, with uh, material things. Uh, so I can't imagine, imagine like trying to set a ghost on fire. You know, what's, what's the deal there? It's just not one of those things. Larry, that's such a good point. Yeah, when you're in hell, you don't even have your body. So like, what are you no. poking with the pitchfork to begin with? Like, that's fine. It's all good. It just goes right through the soul. But isn't, yeah. isn't the Christian thing like of a bodily resurrection, like a physical bodily resurrection? I mean, wasn't that what happened when uh, when when Jesus died? That you know, thousands of graves opened up and the people got out of them and started walking around. Yeah. So I am also uh -huh. aware of Jehovah Witness end times, where bodies will come from graves, and yeah. there's even planets where stewards will be in charge of them, and people will be people will be taken to those planets to be cared for by the the certain allotted number of chosen people it's 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 out there but you know uh dead bodies coming out and and hanging out with people seem to be pretty common the thing is 
we know how I don't know if we know how decay works or if they knew how decay works because you know a lot of these bodies that we were expecting to come out of nowhere have already gone through multiple cycles of the water cycle have probably been fish and other animals at this point bacteria at this point like yeah. you know you bring back a body okay. like how's that going to work right it's pretty, that's pretty weird all right but yeah i like the uh pitchfork polishing station being completely unaffected by souls the souls are like we don't care either way it was just going through us you can't even give us tetanus now they're just slightly yeah. less sharp sticks that can't even hurt us that's even less of a pain in the butt mm -hmm. all right next one screams of agony amplifier the missive is <laughs> apologies the amplifier has gone mute enjoy the serenity and slightly quieter torment Earplugs are available upon request. <laughs> I don't think that'd be available. But what would you put them into? Those have ears? <laughs> well, okay, but either way, it's like uh, we went from unnecessarily you making everyone's... What'd you say, Dred? Well, that you just hang on to earplugs. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, yeah. So you that's... don't put them in anything. You just hang on. Well, I got earplugs. <laughs> Larry, that was the thing. So earplugs were always... So here's here's my inner lore. Uh, you always had earplugs, but because you were a soul, you had nowhere to stick them in. So you were just stuck with mm -hmm. listening to people scream all the time with earplugs that are completely ineffectual. That's a perfect little island of hell torment to list to live on for the rest of your eternity, right? right? It's like I can't handle these screams, yet I'm surrounded by earplugs, but I don't have ears. No. <laughs> yeah. But now the amplifier is broken. <laughs> so with a broken amplifier, now people can just sit around and gossip now. And I wonder what they'll even have conversations about. But I think that could be a nice improvement, right? Can we mm -hmm. agree on that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dread, what is the quote? I know there's no such thing as a uh, a Posiferian hell, right? But Oh, there is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there is? Talk to me. Yeah. yeah. So the, the beer is stale and the strippers have STDs. <laughs> okay, okay. You didn't know that? Oh, no, okay. I did. I mean, it comes and it goes. It comes and it goes, Dread. It comes and it goes. So, is it basically like a subsection? Is it like the uh, the down the? What it's do you call it's it? like uh, the, the downtown bizarro, version. The bizarro version, yeah. Okay, That's okay. Weird. It's a parallel dimension of the of the paradise. It's not like downtown of the paradise where it's like, hey, you know, it's this is all shit. This is where all the bad stuff goes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Kind okay. Of parallel. Well, you just don't have all the benefits of. of uh... Pastafarian heaven. You don't have the cold beer and the yeah. and all the stuff that they chill out with. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna ask some silly questions too. Like, is there any hope for getting the strippers to be resolved with their with their issues? Because I'd feel bad if they were stuck there for eternity with STDs. Yeah, yeah, you know, there that's been a, a very serious uh, ethical question that's been raised, and um, I'm not sure that there's an answer yet. Okay, but they're not like like um sentient beings got it I mean, got it got they're, it they're like, stripper, uh, stripper robots they're just like yeah. stripper cyborgs or robots stripper, yeah. that's right androids yeah, yeah okay. absolutely non-sentient and non-conscious just like petri dishes of of pathogens where their gonads should be yeah we we sound like uh christians you know <laughs> Fulfilling details about heaven, they know absolutely nothing about. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not, not well, we're talking Bible, about hell. Anywhere. We're talking about hell. We have yeah. an authority to talk about what hell is. We're all going to be going there soon. So I'm yeah. just talking about like what's going on here. Yeah, there's uh, even less information about hell in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about that real quick before we get to the next one? Go uh, ahead, Larry. I think I just wanted to say there's hardly any information about hell at all. No. You know, he keeps uh, Jesus keeps saying, you know, I will prepare a place for you in my Father's mansion. So it's a house, you know, mm -hmm. but he says nothing about hell. You know? Yeah. You know, I, I, I always refer back to uh, the Bart Ehrman, the, the uh, New Testament scholar. And he, he, I mean, he's just great because, you know, he spent, he spent his entire professional career studying the New Testament. And uh, there really is no uh, discussion about, you know, hell or what, what it means. And the most that we know about hell is what Dante wrote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's where uh, we get too. most of our of imagery. Course, that was a complete fiction. <laughs> so, right. mm -hmm. you know, like the nine levels of hell and blah, 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 and the demons actually, and all the rest of it. Actually, Crazy. that's a pretty good lead in because the next missive of inconvenient news that came out in our Bible that has that page that just magically updates is hell's GPS system. 
Uh, Satan's GPS system is down. You're now going to get you get lost and discover new circles of hell all on your own. So no, you don't have to worry about the seven layers and hitting them in a very specific order. You can just go wherever you want now. We're, there we'll goes uh, recalculating. Recalculating. <laughs> recalculating. They're like, don't you guys want to just hang out at Gluttony? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why are we going to uh, envy I, every I, single time? I'd be into it makes no sense. I think Lust yeah. would be kind of cool. Lust could be for some, for, for some people. I would definitely love, like, there's some really fun... What do you call it? Uh, are the are they called the seven sins? What's the, what are the names of the layers? Do they have like a realm title? Give me oh, some the, pride. Yeah, yeah, because there was like purgatory and and blah blah. I don't, I can't remember what they were, but so you can give me pride. I think there were nine, gluttony. nine levels of hell or something. Okay, nine levels of hell, pride, gut, gluttony. Those are like some of the two funnest ones. I can imagine that for sure. Rat battles and pride <clears> must be. <throat> off the chain they must be super cool like the rock shows and pride must be awesome the food and gluttony is going to be amazing larry what's your favorite circle <laughs> like you're looking forward to now that hell's gps system is down what my favorite circle of hell I yeah 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 what's your uh, favorite circle? what well the only thing i would think of you know if the if the heater went out the the lakes of lava would solidify so you wouldn't want to be caught in a lake of lava you know, at that point, you'd have to, you'd want to get out and maybe have a picnic on the shore. You know, okay. That type of thing. Yeah. So I have the the seven the the most of the circles of hell right now. You have limbo. You've got lust, dread's favorite. You got gluttony, yeah. my favorite. That's the third circle. Now we can go there directly. We got greed as the fourth circle. You know. That's where Trump will go, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got wrath, which Asshole. is the fifth circle. Yeah. Where's where the wrathful and sullen are punished? You have yeah. hearsay, where heretics Her, yeah, are heretics, punished. Yeah. And yeah. now that's interesting. So would that be like Socrates? Would that be people who like just know no. logical <laughs> arguments? Also, like do they get worse as you go along, or they I get don't better? Think so they're just different. They're just, just different. different. Like different yeah. rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And at my point, I'm like, if you, you always have to go through them in that order, though. But with the GPS system down, you can just hang out at the most funnest one. Just go there directly. Like this is great. Like we can now just go wherever we want to go. Like, uh, you have violence is the seventh one. The seventh circle of hell is dedicated or is divided in three wing, uh, three wings. Um, and they're all about violence. Punishments include immersion in boiling blood, being transformed into trees and bushes and being caught, chased and bitten by wild animals. And then finally, the extra two, eighth and ninth are fraud and treachery. It's pretty interesting. What's your source on this? Uh, I'm sourcing it from, uh, let's see, let's get it from the concept of hells. Don, uh, originates from Dante, oh, Dante. Mm -hmm. epic poem Inferno, which is so everybody out there, if Dante never wrote a book or never lived, what would our concept of hell be? I mean, yeah, believe it or not. Now that's a great question, Larry. The concept of hell as we are informed by it is actually, uh, by, uh, uh, boiling sulfur pits or tar pits that have like sulfur yeah. gases. Yeah, you know, Jesus just said it was going to be eternal fire. And that's that's about all he said. So it could but, just be like an eternal forest on fire. We don't know. Sure, sure, sure. Or in, the what same, he says. in the same book, there was um, a description of hell that was more, that was pretty inclined with just like a tar pit. And I think what happened was some guy saw a tar pit was like, ooh, this place stinks and it's hot and I don't like it. You know what? Hell's like that. And the description of it is right, almost like real right. world places that almost yeah. exist. It's which is always people saying what they don't know and, and claiming it to be true. Right. It's and like, hoping I everybody else will buy into it. Right. And if you ever smelled a uh, sulfur dioxide gas Ooh. bubble, you yeah, would oh, believe, awful. yeah, this is pretty much hell. I believe. Like that. rotten eggs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like dead yeah. skunk. It's not good. Anyway, mm. though, I would, I mean, I could see myself bouncing around violence just for like some quick boxing matches ufc matches get some entertainment and go back to gluttony have a cool time like there's if you plan a if you plan a vacation in hell accordingly it, could, it couldn't be that bad actually it might be pretty fun that's all i'm saying uh L gary nice to have you yeah. back we're talking about um okay so uh the torture chamber massage chairs okay so there was a torture chamber in heaven this is another missive 
So we're sorry to let you know that our torture chambers are down. Please enjoy the massage chairs. <laughs> Stretch out on a rack for a temporary release. So now instead of being tortured in hell on racks, you can just get a, a nice massage. I think that's okay too. What do you guys think about that? Larry's still like, I'm still a soul. There's nothing I can do about this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it, what's a massage if their hands just go right through you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's There's to no massage? Yeah. So you need like what if it was done by another soul though? What are your soul rules, Larry? Like if you're if it was a soul who was doing massage to another soul, would that not allow contact? Well, who knows? There's I mean, we've never just had a soul to test and see if what their physical properties are. And my feeling on that is because they don't exist. There there are no such things as souls. <laughs> this is the first time but, you've ever you said know, that. No, you've, no, you've, you've never ever brought this <laughs> no. up. This is all new. But news. I mean, you know, we we don't know anything about it. People profess that they know all about souls and what mm. they are, but even professional ghost hunters have never shown us a ghost. All they've no. you know, done is told us about the sounds they heard, et cetera, which could be but, caused by another person. But there is a problem with a ghost show that would find that a ghost exists because they would no longer be the ghost hunters. They'd be the ghost finders and it'd be a one episode show. <laughs> and the show description would be, we did it. And there wouldn't be a yeah. season two or four or yeah. 17. Just Unless like, they oh, continue to find them. And, no, you know, be exactly. Like a... Right. And, and, and it would be like, uh, you know, Apollo 15 was to Apollo 11, you know, just nobody watched TV anymore. Or gave a gave a heck about it. <laughs> right, just right, 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 right. No, right. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> can anyone name the seventh person that landed on or walked on the moon? Right. right? It's like yeah. we're kind of done. We figured it out. So everyone wants to be the first and greatest. That's why there's so many hunters. But as soon as one person does, that show's over, right? And I think they know it. I think at this point they know it, and they're just riding the wave of money. I almost can guarantee you, if they found an actual ghost, they'd be like, let's not let's pretend we don't broadcast this. And just ride this gravy train for as long as possible. Like I know there's well, a ghost, I, you know there's a ghost. I don't know. I, I, know there are I, I take the opposite view on that. I think that if they found one, it would give them such a sense of accomplishment that they would want to find another and another and see how they differ, you know, and and, and bring Aww. it to the forefront. Of, it would they would win probably a Nobel well, Prize for actually science. finding one. And then the would, rewards, you know, uh, then, would outclass then it would be a science. Then it yeah. would be a science. At that point, yes, you're right. Dread, very good point. Larry, they good call point. it something like phenomenology or something like that, right? Phenomenology. I love that so much. That's great. That's that's such a cool name. I wish another branch of science would use that. That's so awesome. But yeah, uh, if they had good intentions, right? I think, and and I guess proper funding or or what do you call it? Good uh, data. You know, if they could collect some data. good data from it uh, to mm. prove it. So and often, maybe get it repeatable. Say we come back next Saturday night and we correct. find it again, or right. we bring some witnesses in, you know, some scientists to verify it, mm. and it happens again. Then mm. we got something that's verifiable, and you can write a paper on and make um, Nobel prizes out of it. So I can yeah. tell you that, from my perspective, the order of how science comes about in, is oftentimes, oftentimes, a complete accident that you just recorded because you're using the scientific method to document how you were doing everything. And then something unexpected happens and you're like, let's repeat this, ex this experiment again to see if this happens again, then right. it happens again. And you're like, okay, let's yeah. stop and see if we can let our supervisors know or get funding for this because this experiment costs money, but we know how to get this particular result. And now once I have money and funding, like I'll, I'll reach, I'll, I'll write a grant and then I'll have, people who are expecting results that I have to be honest to who can fund the research, the novel research that I came up with so I can get some notoriety along with it. I can publish. And now there's like a whole body of work that I can present and be a forefront of right. that. I have creditors that I owe to do so in like an objective and detailed manner. Like that yeah. tends to be an impetus for like in a weird way, really cool science. So like if you're just some guy with a TV show and you're just interested in making more of that TV show, I don't think they'd be as genuine as someone who like may have inadvertently come up with like some way of connecting two batteries together and being like, oh my gosh, it's Ghostbusters land. <laughs> yeah. This happened. Hold on yeah. a second. Don't cross the beams. <laughs> don't cross yeah. the beams. How do well, I keep we, making we, Joseph here? Go ahead. We forgot another option that could happen instead uh -huh. of having scientists come in 
the military would probably want to come in, shut gotcha. the whole thing down, privatize gotcha. it to them and, and put it in the lab and see if they can make a weapon out of it. But right. that, yeah. Okay. So yes, that does happen. Too. <laughs> Larry, that happens too. But you know what? Uh, a lot of really cool things have come about from that process. Cause after they figure out, okay, we really can't make a weapon out of Velcro, but it is useful to have Velcro. We're going to, we're going to issue it out. So for example, no. Yeah. Oh, you ahead. can make a weapon out of a ghost. You can send him into places where he would not be seen, gather secrets, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Or, yeah, if it doesn't kill anybody. Assassinate, you know. Or you can bring stuff. back like fallen soldiers and be like, hey, you get a second chance. You're back on the contract yeah. again. It's like, oh, this is right. awesome. It could mm -hmm. work. But like we a military is uh so NASA's technically military funding, it's government funding, right? And every dollar that we spent on helping figure out how to get a rocket to like uh, uh Mars or the moon or even just an atmosphere making satellites has paid back dividends dramatically. And there's a lot of really cool technology that we have as a result of it. So right. it's not always a bad thing when the military like steps in and funds research. As long as the research gets funded and the scientific method is allowed to be followed. And what I just hope is that, you know, if ghosts were real, they would have serious backing so that we can benefit from phenomenology. Anyway, uh, Larry, I think we're close to the bottom of the first half hour. Pretty, pretty close. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. And I'm ready. You are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can jump back into it. I'm I'm okay. in a living camp right now. Yeah, I want to talk about that if that was possible, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Three, two, one. Yep, three, two, Welcome one. back. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dodder Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002, we're in a 22nd year now, and have 1,100 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high-top tables, or if it's pretty weather, outside on the deck. You can find us online at facebook.com, meetup.com, or knoxvilleatheist.org, our website. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to a meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. By the don't find one, start one. That's right. Start one. one. Yeah. Where do you want to pick up one bet? I got some quick uh uh I actually had some listener comments, but I would I do have some questions about the 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 core that Dredd is enjoying. That is quite a nice little stay that you're in. Would you mind talking about that? with that sorry you you the yeah, core like, what's, yeah, what's the like, core it's just really really pretty where he's at right now i've never seen him in such a nice oh little... yeah yeah so i'm in a medic shack uh on a this is actually a carbon capture project here i'll show you so uh right now we've got a Ooh, bunch of people so pretty building this up yeah it is the sky is very nice but um oh yeah, it's a it's a carbon capture project, and and so I live on on site, uh, in a medic shack. So you know, I got a bedroom and kitchen and all that good stuff. So and I don't have to drive to work or from work. I'm here all the time, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's actually quite nice. I like it. I could get used to this. What do you do for entertainment there? Uh, I've got a TV, and of course, I've got my computer and books and computer all games. that good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, video games. I've been uh, you know, I've been learning Spanish. I've been uh, taking a physics course. Uh, I'm working on uh, getting into calculus. So I'm doing my pre-calculus. Yeah, well, cool. you know, because I I decided to go back to university to finish my degree, right? So um yeah, working on all that and stuff. What, and what's your major? What's hey? your major? Your major? Uh it's just general studies because I have a diploma in that. So it's very, very diverse, and I essentially just pick whatever I want to do. And you learn oh, how to do awesome. a lot of research. That's so cool. Yep. That's yep. cool. We're all at tens today. This is great. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we have a listener comment. This one's coming from Patty. She uh, is a friend of mine. She's a Christian. She actually works out with me, and she's been listening to the show. Uh, we appreciate it. She's uh, she's She is a Christian, 
but she's very open-minded and has some really, we've had some thoughtful conversations. The question that she's asking is, I've uh, this is on our show Snowflakes, where we were talking about how um, basically people will look at a, the, a snowflake and say it came from God if they don't know the mechanics of like how a snowflake is created. And like, there's no better demonstration that we understand the mechanics of how snowflake is created by the fact that we can make snowflakes ourselves and like blow them on hills for fake snow. Like we, we understand the process well enough. And so it's not like a, a, a supernatural design. It's just a, a manipulation of some really basic physical um, parameters, right? And um, what she had mentioned, it's a, it's, it's a bit of a long message, but here's the sh uh, short of it. I've often wondered what do atheists believe is the purpose behind the ornateness of a snowflake? Is it purely a result of natural process or is there a deeper significance atheists find in their beauty? Uh, she, she starts it off by basically saying like, it's okay, I understand what you mean by the show that we know how it was made, but do you think there's any purpose behind the ornateness? Because we could have had snowflakes look like a standard thing over and over again. Larry, I see you shaking your head, but I'd love to hear from Dredd. Dredd, Dredd, Dredd. Uh, it's Dredd. just uh, people. Oh, no, they Larry's getting say, in. Larry, also be nice. Say... This is my friend. <laughs> they just, I'm, I'm just out. talking about humanity. He, humans want to see purpose in things. They look for purpose in things uh -huh. uh, where it may or may not be there, and I don't believe that it's there, but that's just right. me. Likewise. Okay. Likewise. Okay. I mean, you the... think about things like, uh, like flight. The flight yeah. is happened you know independent uh at least four times in the history of uh life uh eyeballs same mm. thing you know people often christians often go back to this well look at the eyeball or look at the trees i mean it's the complexity is impossible it's like well that's an argument for an from ignorance it's not it's nothing more than that just because you don't know how it's how it happened doesn't make it uh, necessarily uh, create a creation from a divine being. Go ahead, Larry. All right. Well, just because a snowflake doesn't have a purpose doesn't mean that we don't have purpose, but we supply our own purpose. We generate, you know, we may have a, a certain purpose when you're in your teens or another one when you're in your 20s or 30s, another one when you're 50. You know, purpose, people can have many purposes and change them as they get older. You know, just yeah. do what and, you and remember, your purpose remember, is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, remember Steve Martin? He had a special purpose, remember? In the oh. movie The Idiot? <laughs> yeah. Mama me, told uh, me about my special purpose. Let me get to the, the heart of her question because uh, she's asking, as a Christian, I see the uniqueness of snowflakes as a reflection of God's creativity and design. However, I'm curious to hear from atheists, how do you personally appreciate the delicate intricacy of snowflakes? And what significance, if any, do you find in their ornate designs from a secular perspective? Like, is there anything from the secular world point of view that makes you look at a snowflake and be in any sense of awe or, or well, certainly. appreciation? I mean, there's yeah. there's true if they're if it's true that none are ever alike, then there are trillions of different designs. That is awesome. That is amazing. I mean, I said in awe that I sit in awe that there are so many different variations of the six-sided hexagonal. It's just incredible. I can be in awe of a, a beautiful sunset, or a, a, what I'm in awe of is the sea. Uh, I was in, in the Navy for four years. I spent two years on a destroyer. Whenever I go to the seashore, I'm, I just sit in awe of, of the vastness and the complexity of the life inside the sea and how it all started there. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Dread, you look like a person who spent some time on seas. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say Yeah, or in, or in the forests or anywhere, really. I mean, mm. actually up here, when uh, every morning I am, uh, you know, uh, witness to these beautiful sunrises, and sunsets it's like i can never get tired of this and it's uh it always fills me with awe and wonder and all the rest of it even mm. though i can look at it from a different point of view uh you know from a scientific point of view um i think understanding things is is much better than just you know saying it's the result of something i will never understand i wouldn't yeah, want to be that person 
even the pursuit of understanding is more valuable than the that, assumption that, that you know the exactly. answer. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, I throw yeah. this out too. I remember seeing a YouTube video of a guy who got these um, uh, glasses that help correct vision for people who have uh, color blindness. And it wasn't the typical video where someone puts it on and starts crying. In fact, he was very skeptical. He, he, he used a very scientific approach of like, I actually would like to prove that these things don't work. And a lot of the videos that are out are like dramatized and like staged. That's why the cameras are all set up. Some of I them bought are. my own pair. Mm -hmm. I have this kind of color blindness. It's been impacting me for X, Y, Z. So I see like reds and greens. It's sort of like a brown. And I am, I'm going to put them on for the first time ever. And I'm going to walk outside and I'm going to give you my honest, true impressions of like what I think about this. I'm not crying. I'm just going to put them on and put them on. So, oh my goodness. Oh no. <laughs> oh, there's different greens. And that's yeah. a green. And that's a green. No, they're all different. I can't believe the trees and the bushes aren't the same color and grass. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Grass is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like he went from like a complete 180 and he tried so hard not to. He's like, Oh, what's that color? Is this orange? <laughs> or purple. <laughs> right. Things that mm -hmm. I take for granted as someone who can see color on a regular basis. Like, right. uh, uh, I look at like um, sunsets in the same way where I'll just stand outside and admire the fact that I can appreciate the so the variety of colors, the deep reds, deep purples, uh, as it bleed into yellows and oranges. And there's like no other vivid kind of like neon, bright kind of like cloud sky. It's not even like a color cloud. It's just the sky is purple and red and it happens every day. And it's just such a beautiful thing. I also got a drone and I can fly up to about 400 feet legally. The sunsets from 400 feet above uh, land is completely different than when you're seeing it when it's obscured by like a skyline. So when you have completely uninterrupted curvature of the earth and you can see the entire broad horizon and all the variety of different colors as the sun is like bleeding into like the, it's like you're seeing it from a plane. It's just so it's so impressive that you have access to that. So yeah, I think there's a lot of things from a secular perspective that you can still appreciate that a Christian would appreciate the same thing too. If we saw even like a snowflake, we can both appreciate the beauty and the intricacy of it. It's just that um, from what we are attributing it to is one is being used to uphold a dogma that they were taught when they were young and the other one's being used to further appreciate the, me the mechanics of how all things came to be in a tested and objective format that we can still learn from in order to improve our lives and quality of lives uh, uh, moving forward. So yeah, uh, thank you very much, Patty. We appreciate the comment. Um, I wanted to go into wins real quick. Uh, we often, we spend a lot of time badgering Christianity, but I also want to talk about some positivity too. I want to say, I, I, was, I was telling you guys at the top of the uh, the show that I have like a uh, a board where I write down my mood from like one out of 10 or zero out of 10 when I wake up. And for the last three weeks, since I started the board, I've just been at a 10 out of 10, just been every single time I'm thinking like maybe at a nine or an eight or 9.5. I just think to myself like, no, because I can fix this problem or, uh, I'm sore now because I worked out hard and that's good that I worked out, you know, or, you know, like, I, maybe I didn't meet my goals, but I'm more inspired and I can find time to resolve them. And I can put that back to a 10. So like everything that's broken, similar to how things can break in hell, I find manageable and like fixable on my own, on my own, on my own effort. And so I feel really good about that. That's a win for me. I want to know, Dred, have you had times where things have been going wrong and you were able to fix it? Like, do you have a win, a win this week? And would you mind sharing it? Yeah, I, I had a huge win this week. I, uh, I'm, I'm going into uh, the paramedic program. Nice. Uh, nice primary right. care paramedic. And uh, so there's a uh, there's a, a a college or a medical training facility that, and one of the campuses is here, so in Fort St. John. So it, and it starts on March the eighth. Nice. So I've been uh, rushing around trying to meet all the prerequisites. Uh, you know, there's some additional training that uh, I didn't realize I was, uh, you know, required to have. And so uh, there was an outfit here and another outfit here in uh, Dawson Creek that offered it. And so I signed up and uh, paid for it, but then uh, realized or was informed uh, that it, the, the college I want to go to doesn't recognize it um, as a 
as a legitimate provider. So uh, I had to rush around and I actually had to buy um, plane tickets to Vancouver wow. for a two day course. So, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, at my own expense wow. just to meet, just to meet this one final criteria. Uh, but there was, there, lives. Was a problem, there was a problem that needed fixing and I fixed it. So I felt good about oh, good. it because good I just got that done yesterday. I, I fly out uh, in about a week and a half, but uh, that's the last hurdle I have uh, to get through. And uh, I was glad that I did it. Dread, you know what you deserve? Well done. You deserve some all dressed chips. And that is a, <laughs> a, a little Canadian thing that only exists in Canada. It's the best flavor of chips possible. And a lot of people don't realize that because Americans don't have access to it. Um, I've, whenever I have a friend that goes to Canada, I'm like, bring back all dressed ruffles. They're the best thing ever. Um, but that's fantastic. I'm glad you went through all that trouble and uh, worked hard to resolve that issue. Larry, what do you got as a win? Uh oh, what do you got as a win? You're on mute. I don't understand the question. What do oh, I? Oh, what do you mean, Larry? We we're talking about wins. Tell me something that you overcome. A challenge you oh, overcome. over the something yeah. I've overcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me something. Well, where you um... were faced with the dilemma, you resolved it, and you won. God said, "I'm giving you this," and you said, "No, thank you." <laughs> and you, you give him a little uppercut and a little liver. Well, I'm, and he's I'm like, still... "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry," and he left you alone. And you're like, yeah. "That's right." Don't mess with Larry Rhodes again. <laughs> well, I don't know if I I could call it a. It's definitely a win, but I don't know if I can grab credit for it because you know my knees. Sure. Um. You know, when they when you when they start going up, they start giving you pain, mm -hmm. and the pain is is chronic. It happens all the time, every day. You know, and it keeps you from sleeping. But you know, of course, I uh, got a hold of my my doctors, and we worked out a solution, and we went through the the operation and and it's all better now nice however you, my, yeah go ahead what'd you do what helped you well, basically just yada yada knee pain away and i'm wondering like what what happened well no it was an operation but uh, even after the operation i still had some pain but it was coming from my muscles and stuff then because they take a while to, to heal after an operation like that Gosh. but after a couple months it was when when my my knee is now strong again i feel better of course now my other knee is coming out and it's going out and i'm I'm back on crutches again because of my, ah. other, my other knee. But I have an appointment Monday. I'm going to start handling that and probably uh, get another operation. So another couple, three months. Larry, let me I'll tell you this. Two strong way. knees. You only uh -huh. have two knees. Isn't that great? Bilateral symmetry. Yep. Aren't you glad uh -huh. we didn't evolve to be four-legged animals? And you're like, oh, well, now Ooh. it's time for my third knee. <laughs> yeah. And then the fourth one after probably this. <laughs> end up being two years of ordeals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We did not become centaurs. Evolution win. Congratulations. Yeah. You only got two yeah, well, knees. Yeah, true. But college is another win. I mean, it, four years of, of struggle to get through college. Mm. And uh, for your doctorate, you had how many years? Me? Uh-huh. I, I had five years for my doctorate. Though I got to spend a year overseas working, and that was cool. But that's so that not was... counting your your undergraduate work no it's not kind of my undergraduate work it was like 12 years of just like straight up like college level courses in high school to undergrad to graduate then working for a year and then writing my thesis for like the very last last year of my doctorate program it was a it yeah. was an endeavor it was an endeavor. Uh, that's, that's an accomplishment quite an accomplishment. i appreciate that yeah absolutely so listen i've always said if i ever wake up and i'm 12 years old again and i don't have the knowledge that i have i'd be like okay well one i'm not the same person anymore so like i'll just go through it all over again it's totally fine with me sure. because i learned a lot mm -hmm. going through that process and i feel like it wasn't just a absolutely piece of paper that i got i just learned mm -hmm. how to work with other people much more effectively as a result of learning what my limitations were and improving myself through education. Right. However, if I know what I know now and I'm 12, I'm never going to school again. I'm telling my mom, like, listen, <laughs> mom, here's a bunch of math facts. I'm dropping out of school. I'm never going to class. I'm never doing homework. I'll, I could, you could test your way out too. Yeah, yeah. I'm just testing the way. like, give me the senior test. Give me the college yeah. test. I'm yeah. done. I don't want to do school anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to do school. I hate school. <laughs> <laughs> After 12 years of, of yeah. college level work. Oh, I, I hated imagine. it when I was in preschool. I remember having to do yeah. vocab. Oh, exams. no. I'm just like writing the words. Damn down. these crayons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was terrible. I'll tell you um, 
another quick win for me is that uh, I'm in the process of getting a new car. I just put a deposit down. The thing that I was very much dreading was going to a car dealership and having to work out, you know, financing, a trade-in, negotiations, a four squared. We got a whole bunch of different add-ons that dealerships put onto cars to inflate, inflate the cost of a car, new insurance, new warranties. I, I had to learn like so many new terms. I was watching YouTube videos and every single one that told you, this is what to say to a dealership and top 40 things never to mention when you're buying a new car at a dealership. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed with all this information of do's and don'ts. I looked online to see, isn't there a way that I could like just buy a car like how I get like a, a watch on Amazon? where they just list out here are the prices and here are the cars and we compete based on other stores that are also available online too. And you just save up money and just buy the thing and you call it, you're done. Yeah. And so yeah. I found um, <clears throat> a dealer or I found a car manufacturer that offers, and I believe others do this too. So it's not the only one, but uh, a system called click to buy, which was simply just, and this is not an endorsement. So I'm going to keep the vague, but the idea is you simply click on the model and the trim that you want. They'll throw out every dealership that's available with online prices that they will honor. And you all you have to do is say, I want to buy that thing. You can choose how you want to buy it. And you you click send and you will get a call back that's like, we're ready if you're ready. And I'm like, I'm ready. Do you have any other questions? Like, yeah, could you do a video around the car? Because you're like two states away from me. And they and they give you a nice little video of like what the car looks like, the tags and all that stuff. I'm like, fantastic. Here's a bunch of questions that I have. They have a responder who gives it back the answers within like the next 10 minutes. And I'm like, looks good. What's the delivery? How are you delivering it? They give you the answers. All the costs were, were thrown into the cost that was online for me to get the car. And I'm like, so easy. I wish everybody knew this because now, you know, it used to be back in the day when you want to buy a car, it was like you'd have to pack up and deal with whatever your local dealership was right. willing to throw at mm -hmm. you. And now it's, no, you could just... I, I I pick whatever if you I went to a dealership that says uh this car is gonna cost this much money and we have these add-ons that you can't take away. I'm like, that's fine, I'll just go to this car, I'll just go to this place. And then this guys were like, We'll give you this much money. I'm like, no, 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 cheaper. And I said, What well, about this one? I was like, we'll give you the lowest possible price with no extra add-ons. And I'm like, I want the add-ons though. It's like, okay, fine, we'll still keep you the lowest price possible. I'm like, this is fantastic. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's what yeah, sounds that painless. Sounds good. Yeah, you have painless. to tell us after you, after you pick it up if everything Absolutely. went according to plan. I, I'll show you the video. I'll put it in the messenger group uh, yeah. and you can see what I'm talking about. But I'm yeah. just happy that we streamline car purchases now of all things that we streamlined. I think that's really nice. More people need to know about yeah. this. So when it comes yeah. in, I'll show you pics, but I'm excited. That's a win yeah. for me. Um, well, Dred, Gary, had, you had yeah. your hand up a second ago. Yeah, go for it. Dread. Dread. Yeah. yeah, you had your hand up. What's up? Oh, uh, well, I, I just mentioned that my laptop has restarted by itself twice oh. now. So mm. I'm I'm in computer hell. Nice. That means you get very, to go very, outside. Very, touch... very inconvenient. You can touch yeah. the snowflakes. <laughs> yeah. I have um, a, uh, you know, I don't go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, uh, I, I think I told you I was in a, a car accident and uh, ICBC was trying to determine blame. Uh, so anyway, I got the news that uh, the other guys at fault and either they're going to fix my car or pay me out for it. So that's why I was also thinking about potentially buying a new car as well. Ooh, okay. I'll, I'll so, send you some cool so tips. So thank, uh, thank you for that tip there because that would definitely be the way I go about it. Oh, absolutely. If I ever get another car, I'm just doing this literally yeah. again. It's the easiest cool. way to do it. Yeah. Um, one other thing that eluded me earlier, but now I, I think about that was that I overcame that I'm very proud of, and that's leaving religion behind Ooh, and, right. and, and it back. becoming an atheist. Um, that was, you know, years of uh, come coming up to the point of, of being able to change over and then changing over to non-belief, uh, and so many of us have gone through that. Um, some atheists have, were born into an atheist family, didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. But I would say 90% of atheists out there are post-religion. So they've been yeah. through that. They know the religions that they left behind. And they're not, we're not good to proselytize to. I almost, yeah. I know it's, it's a harder track, but I almost respect and like 
people who've gone through the process of being born without religion, being indoctrinated into religion, and then coming out again. One, because mm -hmm. it mirrors the the path that I was on, but two, because I know that path is is like brick laden and level and and quite strong because it's gone through the test, right? Like a person who's gone through that process knows why they're an atheist. If they can articulate it and they have good reasoning, I value yeah. that more than someone who's never been exposed to religion whatsoever. And just like, no, I've always been an atheist. I, what are you talking about? It's like, what a, that's like someone who was born in Hawaii and saw like sunsets and tropical rainbows every day of their life. And you're like, you never really experienced weather. You don't know how <laughs> you don't know what a, a, a winter in Milwaukee will be like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't tested the storm. And that's right. why you get the crystals around your neck. You're just like, you, you're still vulnerable. Yes. You don't even realize how vulnerable yet. Like, but we've been tested through the fire. And that's, in my opinion, that's, and, that's really good. And I absolutely agree. I was having this conversation with my wife yesterday, uh, you know, because there was this thing on Facebook where, uh, uh, you know, they had put, made a post that somebody was giving away a free 2024 Tacoma. Mm. And all you had to do was click a link and put in, you know, at hitch or something like that. And I could not believe how many people were doing it. Wow. And, you know, it was clearly, you know, clearly a scam. They even spelled the words wrong in the post. Like, as though that wasn't a good enough giveaway, just the fact that, you know, some random person's giving away a brand new Tacoma, it, it just, it's, it's it astonished me. Yeah. And again, for those who are indoctrinated into a religion, it is representative of a mm. failure to think critically mm. uh, and to, ha and it, the lack of a methodology to re reliably evaluate evidence right, right. that's right. what it comes down mm. to a yeah. failure to reason hurts you in more than just religious circles it hurts you yeah. financial men All the mentally way. and physically because yeah. i'll dread one quick thing before we go i had a fun video that i'm going to show at work tomorrow which was 1984 when seat belts were made compulsorily or compulsory right. in america in america and okay. there's uh news guys on the road just like videotaping people talking about, well, I never have to wear a seatbelt, but I don't get why it's against the law. Like, there's no way this keeps me from getting injured. Like, I think there's going to be just as many traffic accidents, just as many deaths. I don't understand it. And there's like, they're smoking in front of their babies and they just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the idea that people could be so confident yet so wrong is startling. And so you have to, like, at a certain point, be willing to let go of your confidence and listen to, like, uh, a, a former reason that is demonstrable, testable, and and provided to you by someone who can, who is not necessarily just an authority, but someone who can explain to you, hey, listen, if you're an accident and this is around your chest, you're not going to fly through your windshield, right? That's what makes you live, right? Can we agree that's a thing? Okay, you're not going to get in a car accident, but you never plan to get in a car accident. That's why you're wearing one. Isn't that amazing? Well, you know, it, it's funny that you say that because uh, there was a conversation on on our church page with respect to the freedom truckers in Canada. Okay. And you know, people questioning what they were even about. And of course it was about mandated vaccinations for truckers crossing the border. Oh, um, wow. You know, that was sort of the, the reason touted anyway. And so I said the same thing. I said, so does that mean you don't wear uh, seatbelts because those were mandated? Right. You know, it, right. You know, it's all part and parcel of the same thing. It's in the public interest. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> right. As a parent, so many going ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say so many people take pleasure in in spreading misinformation these days. Yeah. Mm. I mean, knowing it's misinformation, just go ahead and just put it out there mm. uh, and and try to get people to believe it for fun. It, yeah. uh, it, it could be the ruin of our society, especially with this UI. I mean, um, AI is coming. Right. Uh, they can replicate all kinds of conditions and show it is true and right. they're going to do it. And it's just going to be, it may very well be the downs downfall of the foundation of our society. If you, what can you believe? What can't you believe? It just started yeah. off with vaccinations in my, in my opinion. And of course, Trump was in the white house, which added to it because he didn't 
push them as much as he should have. Mm. I do think there's a really good al uh, analogy between seatbelts and vaccines, and I never saw it until you just brought that right. up. I appreciate that. Also, as I a mean, paramedic, you're in the interest of saving people's lives. You don't want to go to a scene yeah. and someone's dead when they could have been saved, right? Right. So that's right. Like, that's a two. That's a two. That's not a, a your job. It's a group project. And so the most a, a potential victim can do is make your job easier, make sure that they don't die because it's in the interest of both of you guys. So vaccines, seat belts, um, and the mere, good diet, good health, finding friends to talk to, finding good cultures. And if you're stuck in a religion and you don't think anyone uh, can help you, we have outlets for that. We have um, uh, freedom from religion. Do you want to bring up some more, Larry? Or you're a local atheist group. If you don't find one, start one. What else, what else can people go to? Well, like, no, I just I, I'd like to hit pasta. Eat some pasta. Eat some yeah. pasta. Yeah. Ah. No, I just I'd like to hit on vaccinations. I mean, I'm fifth. I was born in 1950, and polio was a thing then. I mean, lots of people, lots of children uh, got polio. Uh, couldn't use their legs. Some of them ended up in in iron lungs. It's just I mean, and we wiped it out through uh, vaccines. Yep. Vaccines work. And yep. now half of the country, same, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't vaccinate. You know, yep. they're trying to put a chip in me, which is right. just stupid. <laughs> right. You know, just well, you know, that, that's the thing. Like, I saw Bill Gates at the last TED Talks, not the last one, the one before. And uh, he says, because there were protesters outside the whole time, you know, about vaccines and uh, and chips. And he says... What am I going to do with all that information? Why do I want to know where everyone is? <laughs> he says, they all they all carry these phones around, so you know, like they're already being tried. Why do you need a chip yeah. in your body when you're right. voluntarily carrying around a chip around? If you put an Apple yeah. logo on it. You'll carry one with yeah. you regardless. So it's yeah, yeah, good. voluntarily. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're up for wrong. final yeah. words. Uh, we're getting right there at the end. Okay. Want to start closing out? It's just stupid. I love it. Oh, by the way, if anything breaks down in hell, uh, don't worry about it. Relax. It's only going to make things better. And uh, I like that. I like that. That's good. And it can't last forever. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going down to fix it. So yeah. just yeah. wait it Jet out. Pirate, do you have, right. have links you'd like to put out? Dread Pirate, do you have links you'd like to put out? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, Mind Pirate, that's my YouTube channel, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. Mm -hmm. I've been doing uh, just weekly vignettes on anything and everything Pastafarian and, uh, you know, kind of uh, surrounding that. Uh, yeah, come check it out. It's kind of fun and, uh, you know, yeah. Very check good. It out. Wombat, links? Uh, I want to just send a, a shout out to Patty, who's probably watching this show too. Uh, if we got a little jovial, that's that's typical, but also thank you for your comment. We appreciate it. And we love snowflakes too. Okay, very good. My content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. My YouTube channel handle is at Doubter5, and you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. Amen. Amen. Good stuff, man. Good All show, right. everybody.